Hello and welcome dear viewers to our question and answer session brought to you here on Suze TV. You're going to be with me Munir Mustafa as we guide each other on how to tackle questions which occur in biology. Today we're going to be starting with the form 2 syllabus. As you all know form 2 is a very important class as it is a transition period from the lower O level that is form 1 to the higher O level that is form 3 and form 4. So let's start to look at the questions which occur here. So beginning with our first question which says that to differentiate between kingdom fungi and kingdom plantae. A forward to the viewers. We finished in form one, in the form one syllabus at classification but we only began classification so we are continuing on the same topic of classification but under other kingdoms so we're going to continue with kingdom fungi so our first question is saying that we should differentiate between kingdom fungi and kingdom plantae this is just a simple differentiation question that is we should show the differences between members of kingdom fungi and members of kingdom plantae so in answering a question like this we can simply start to, by drawing a table which shows its differences in one column you can put kingdom plantae and the other you can put kingdom fungi so beginning we can see that the first difference is that the cell wall of a member of kingdom plantae is made of cellulose. So we can see that both of them have cell walls, but the cell wall of kingdom plantae or plants are made up of cellulose, which is a tough carbohydrate, which is a tough substance which helps keep the rigidity or the turgidity of the cell in a plant. Also we have in kingdom fungi the cell wall is made up of chitin. Chitin is what we would call a mixture between a carbohydrate and protein. So the cell wall in a fungus is made up of chitin while the cell wall in plants is made up of cellulose. Moving on they are autotrophic. So members of kingdom plantae are autotrophic. That is, they produce their own food. They manufacture their own food. So members of kingdom plantae are autotrophs which make their own food through photosynthesis. As they make their own food from sunlight using the chlorophyll found in the cells. But kingdom fungi are heterotrophic. The heterotrophism or the gaining of nutrients from other organisms in kingdom fungi can vary. They can either be saprophytes, that is they feed on dead or decaying organisms, or they can be parasites, that is they gain their nutrients through harming others. Also another one is that they store food as starch. So members of kingdom plantae store their food or store the, the manufactured food in the form of starch. While in kingdom fungi, they store it as glycogen. So another difference is that on how the food is stored in organisms. In kingdom plantae, the food is stored as starch. In kingdom fungi, the food is stored as glycogen. Members of kingdom plantae have bodies which are organized into tissues, organs, and organ systems. So the bodies of plants are organized in that way. So we can see that they have the cells, they have tissues such as xylem and phloem, they have organs such as roots, leaves, the shoot. While the members of kingdom fungi have bodies, which are organized into hyphae. Hyphae are just thin thread-like structures which make up the fungus body. 
So a cluster of them makes up the body of the fungus while in plants there's an organization of tissues, organs and cells. Most of them, in another difference is that members of kingdom plantae are multicellular. That is, they are made up of many cells. So mostly all plants are made up of many cells, while in kingdom fungi some are unicellular. So there are some members of kingdom fungi which are unicellular. That is, they are made up of one cell. For example, yeast. We know that yeast is a common fungus which is used in our daily lives, such as in baking bread, in making wine, but we all know that the real form of a yeast is just a single cell body. So it's a unicellular body, but it's a fungus. So by drawing a table like this, by showing differences like this, a student can answer a question based on differentiation. Moving ahead to the second question, in what ways are kingdom fungi advantages and disadvantages to humans? So we're just being told to mention the advantages and disadvantages of kingdom fungi. The members of kingdom fungi, like any other organisms, have their benefits and have their harms, which occur in humans and other organisms. So you can draw a table like this or you can just begin by writing the advantages and then writing the disadvantages after or you can write it vice versa. So while if you draw a table like this you could just write each column as its advantage and another column as its disadvantage. By beginning with the advantages is that they are used as food for humans. Some types of fungus can be eaten and are edible. For example, mushrooms and truffles and other, or other fungi. But some fungi can be eaten by humans and are very nutritious and provide a good source of proteins. So we know that there are some fungi which can be eaten. Fungi can be used as medicine to treat various diseases so we know that there are some types of fungus which can be used as medicine which can be used as methods to treat or agents to treat diseases for example we have penicillin drug which is used in relieving pain and reducing infections but the real form of penicillin or the main thing that comes from penicillin is a fungus known as penicillium. So from penicillium we can obtain penicillin which is a very important medicine used here. Also fungi can be used in agriculture as fertilizers. There are some types of fungi which can be used in the agricultural field as fertilizers and also as growing supplements. For example we have Gibberellins is a growing hormone or a growing phytohormone which comes from the fungus known as Gibberella fujikoroi. So the Gibberella fujikoroi produces certain hormones which help the plants to grow very well. Also they are used in industries, for example in the bakery and the brewery industries. As I've said before that in the bakery we use fungi to help rise the dough. So we use yeast, common yeast which is known by everyone, is used to help rise the dough in baking bread, cakes and other, and other things. While in brewery industries, yeast is also used as a main medium to ferment, to ferment wine. So in the wine production, yeast is used. Also they can be used in the fermentation of other organisms or other foodstuffs. But we've seen its advantages but what are the disadvantages of kingdom fungi? So by looking at the disadvantages we can get many things. So for instance they cause a multitude of diseases. 
to humans. So fungi, even though they are very beneficial, but they can also cause diseases. There are some types of fungi which cause diseases to human beings, such as athlete's foot, candidiasis, and so on and so on. There are many diseases which are caused by, which are caused by fungi. Also, there is ringworm and others which are caused by fungi. There also, fungi can cause the spoilage of foods. So some foodstuffs can be spoiled by fungi. So fungi, fungi can cause this food to be spoiled and be unfit for consumption. For instance, we have the black bread mold. The black bread mold is a common fungus which is seen to be growing on bread after a certain period of time. When this starts to grow, the bread is now said to be not fit for eating. So if someone eats it, it would definitely harm them. Also, they cause plant diseases. So some fungi can cause diseases to plants, not only to human beings, which the plant diseases can affect the crop yield and crop production. This in turn harms the farmers and other people, can harm the farmers and also the market. So for instance, potato blight. Potato blight is a very serious disease which occurs on, in the potato plants, some certain parasitic fungi can cause harm to it. Also there is the Dutch elm disease. The Dutch elm disease is a disease which is caused by fungi which attack elm trees which shorten their life, turn them grey and eventually the trees die. Also they produce myotoxins which are very harmful to humans and other organisms. This is the first time that some people have heard the word myotoxin. Well myotoxin is nothing but toxins which are produced by fungi. So the toxins or poisonous stuffs which are produced by fungi are known as myotoxins. So some fungi produce this and, ha and can harm humans. For instance, there are toadstools, puffballs and other types of fungi which produce myotoxins which can be fatal to human beings. Moving ahead to our next question, where we are told to outline the characteristics of the phyla of kingdom fungi and write an example of each member of each phylum. So this also is a straightforward question which requires a person to just mention the phyla of kingdom fungi, mention the characteristics and also mention an example from each. It can be one example, it can be two examples, whichever comes to your mind and if there is time. So beginning we should know how many phyla of kingdom fungi are there. So in textbooks and in the form 1 and form 2 level there are three known phyla of kingdom fungi, which are phylum zygomycota, phylum ascomycota, and phylum basidiomycota. So when mentioning these, each of them have their certain characteristics, but there are some characteristics which are common in all of them. So you should just write the characteristics which differentiate or show that this is a member of phylum zygomycota, for instance. So you can write it in a tabular form, like this. So in answering like this, you, can, you just write in one column phylum and write the name of the phyla. You write the characteristics and the example. Now moving on to answer the question, we begin with phylum zygomycota. 
we, look, we can look into their characteristics. First, they release spores in a forceful way. So one, one certain characteristic of phylum zygomycota is that they release spores explosively. That is, they release spores over a high area by using a high force. Also, they reproduce sexually to form zygospores. So, members of phylum zygomycota reproduce sexually to form some certain organs known as zygospores. Also, they are mostly small. So, in terms of size, members of the phylum zygomycota are very small. For instance, the black bread mold cannot be seen clearly without the help of a hand lens. They reproduce both sexually and asexually. So we know that as any fungi, they can reproduce sexually and asexually in two different ways. In terms of their nutrition, they are mostly saprophytic while some are parasitic. Though are, so they are both of them. They can be saprophytes or they can be parasites. They reproduce sexually in unfavorable conditions. So we know that now we know that for members of phylum zygomycota to reproduce sexually, there should be unfavorable conditions, conditions in which could cause the fungus to die. So in those types of conditions, such as extreme heat or a lack of place for it to grow, it reproduces sexually. An example of a zygomycota, a member of zygomycota, is the black bread mold. Or in other words, it's called Rhizopus stolonifer. So if you see the word Rhizopus stolonifer, you should know that it's just the black bread mold, which is commonly found on breadstuffs. Moving on, we have the phylum Ascomycota. Also, we have seen phylum Zygomycota. Now we can see what are the characteristics of phylum Ascomycota. So first, they have a sac-like structure known as an ascos, which stores spores. So this gives it its name due to the sac-like structure which they have containing its spores called an ascos. That gives it its name of ascomycota. They are both saprophytic and parasitic. Like in phylum zygomycota, they both are heterotrophic, but their modes of eating or the modes of gaining nutrition are either saprophytism, which means they get it from dead or, or decaying organisms, or they are parasites, which mean they harm other organisms in order for them to gain nutrients. They can reproduce sexually and asexually. This is another common characteristic in phylum in the phyla of kingdom fungi, they reproduce sexually and asexually. They are mostly unicellular. So, they are mostly unicellular. Most of the members of phylum Ascomycota are unicellular, single-celled organisms. For instance, the yeast. The yeast is a unicellular organism which is a fungus found in phylum Ascomycota. Its modes of reproduction, it can either reproduce asexually through budding or through asci or ascus through, through releasing the spores or sexually. And finally, we have phylum Basidiomycota. So we know that phylum Basidiomycota is another phyla in is another phyla in the kingdom fungi so we should see or we can see that it also has its certain characteristics for instance 
they have a club like structure known as abasidium which holds spores so holding the holding spores or the organ which holds spores is known as a basidium which gives it its name basidio mycota it has certain characteristics which are the same in other phyla which is the, they both they reproduce both sexually and asexually and also they are sometimes saprophytic or parasitic but another one is that they grow to be very large so Phylum basidiomycota has a tendency of growing very large. So there can be large, which can be easily seen by human beings, or it can grow to intense sizes. Also, they are accepted. That means they lack a scepter. In examples, we can see that an example of Phylum ascomycota is the yeast and powdery mildew. While in phylum basidiomycota, there is the mushroom, toadstool, puffball, and etc. etc. So you can answer a question like this by using this method, or you can just write the phylum, write its characteristics, and write an example afterwards in an essay form, or you can just write it using number form. Moving ahead to our fourth question. Our fourth question is also pretty straightforward. We are just required to draw, our question says that draw and label the diagram of a mushroom. So it's very straightforward that the only thing we need to do is to draw and to label the diagram of a mushroom. For instance, we have, you can label it, but there are some certain features which you have to show. That is the cap, or you can call it a peleus. You can show the gills or the lamellae, the stem or the stape the mycelial threads or the hyphae. These four terms are or these four terms are very important. And you can also write the ring or show the ring and the cup. By drawing something like this, it's simple and this is what is required when told to draw and label the diagram of a mushroom. So a mushroom looks like this. When told, when told to draw and label, you can just draw it like this. Now moving on to our final question, we are told to, we are told to mention in what ways are plants similar to fungi. So we are just told to mention the similarities between plants and fungi. This also is a straightforward question, but most students when asked to mention the similarities also go ahead and mention the differences. A question like this does not need differences to be mentioned. It only needs similarities. So while answering a question like this, you can write it in a bullet form or you can write it in small number form or small letter forms. Whichever you please, it does not have any limit. So you can write five, six, seven, even ten examples or ten similarities. It only depends on your time. But there are some common similarities which can be shown. For instance, they both have cell walls. So we all know that plants and fungi have cell walls even though they are made of different materials. What is not required is the different materials but what is required to be mentioned is just the cell wall. You should show that they both have cell walls which is the similarity between them.
they are both eukaryotes. That is, they have cell or they have membrane-bound organelles plus the nucleus is membrane-bound. So both fungi and both both fungi and plants have a cell, have a nucleus which is bound by a membrane and they also have some membrane bound nuclear organelles such as the mitochondria, the Golgi bodies, the vesicles, the endoplasmic reticulum and so on and so on. They both show limited mobility. Many people also can confuse plants and fungi with this because they both show limited mobility that they do not move that much. A mushroom can be seen growing at the same position and can die at the same position just like a plant. Its, its movement is very very little. It shows very little movement. Also they both have anchoring structures. In plants and fungi, they both have structures which anchor them to the ground, even though they are different. As in plants, its roots, and in, and in fungi, it's the hyphae or mycelium. But looking at it, they both have the same function of keeping the organ, organism rooted to the ground. So their main function is an anchor and a means to gain nutrients or to absorb nutrients. So by using that or by using those structures they show a similarity. I'd like to continue with this program but for today let us stop here. Join us next time as we continue to delve into questions brought into the form 2 syllabus. You are with me Munir Mustafa and join us next time.